will you open us up in the word of prayer, sir? Dear Lord, thank you for this day and many blessings, Lord. We ask that you be with the rest of the song service and the preaching afterwards, Lord. We ask that you put your hand upon the spoken and the unspoken prayer request, Lord. Yes, Lord. Be with each and every one of us that are here, Lord. Strengthen us, comfort us, Lord. Help us to apply the message to our hearts, Lord. Be with yes. the ones who are traveling, Lord. Bring them back safely to us. And just be with us as we go our separate ways and bring us back to the point in our Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Frank. <clears throat> well, this morning, uh, please remember those that we do have on our prayer list uh, that we added this morning. I know Brother Frank just mentioned a uh, few of them here. Uh, but uh, be in mind that uh, Brother Roger and Eva at 7 are traveling uh, this morning. Uh, they left this morning at 7 o'clock. Uh, they will not be back until, I won't say, what, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday? Yeah. They're so, coming back yeah. next Sunday. No, next Sunday. Okay. Who's that? Brother, uh, Brother Roger and Eva at 7. So y'all keep them in prayer. They won't be here next Sunday. They'll, they'll be back traveling. next Right. They'll traveling. be back next Sunday. So you guys keep them in prayer. Uh, also, uh, remember that we have uh, the prayer breakfast coming up. Uh, it's going to be on the 19th uh, at 8 o'clock uh, at Mom's Kitchen. Uh, some good breakfast, some great fellowship. Uh, we have the men and the women meet there, and, and uh, we uh, talk and, and everything. And uh, <clears throat> give God the glory for uh, allowing us to be able to uh, meet and uh, have some good food and fellowship together. Uh, also, uh, keep those that, again, I mentioned on our prayer list uh, this morning, uh, the new, thank you, sir, appreciate it, uh, uh, the dash knot that we have out at the space station, you know, uh, that uh, you might be able to get home and uh, safe and everything. And also, the people in Ukraine going through what they're going through. Uh, it's great to... I know that we have little uh, children coming now, and uh, that we have a Sunday school teacher that's going to be there for them. And uh, we ask that you guys keep Ashley in prayer that uh, uh, God will strengthen her and bring her uh, the words that she needs to uh, uh, say to the young girls in the church. Yes, they are doing very well. She said that even asking them questions from previous lessons, and they still know what we learned on those times as well. So good. They're doing good. Absolutely. See, that's what we like to hear uh, for the young ladies uh, growing up in the church uh, to be able to look up to the uh, the older women that we have here. And that's what God wants us to do. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we have uh, uh, I don't see. Any, oh yeah, birthdays. Uh, we have oh, Shelly's got a birthday uh, on third, and then we have Miss Andre on the twenty fifth. So, you guys, happy birthday, to you guys. Uh, for our uh, our birthdays this month in March, so uh, uh, I think it's just two. So we're gonna have to get some more March birthdays in there to keep y'all some company. So, uh, with that being said, we're gonna uh, turn in our hymnals over to uh, the next page, to uh, page 28, <coughs> bringing in the sheaves. Thank you, brother Billy, for that order. Good tasting water, you guys. That's good. <clears throat> Bring it in the sheets. We'll sing all three verses. <clears throat> Y'all gonna have to be with me this morning. Sounded good already. Uh, Bring it in the sheets. So, on three. All three verses. One, two, three. So begin the morning. So begin the brightness. So begin the noontide and the dewies. We 
Let's turn over to hymnal 203. 203. 203. Amazing grace. Amen. 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 If it wasn't for God's grace, we all wouldn't be here. That's right. 203. Amazing grace. <clears throat> we'll sing the first, second, and the last verse. First, second, and the last verse. <clears throat> On three. One, two, three. Amazing grace. Wow. 
Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Some bright sunshine out there. Yes, Lord. Still a little nippy. Hopefully that'll warm right on up. It's not 33. It's what? It's not 33. <laughs> oh, it's not 33 and rain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which uh, we were able to help 279 families. Wow. That is awesome. So, in the rain. And the sleep. In the cold. Yes, it was cold. You know, and on that note, and just thanks to everybody who helped at the uh, food giveaway. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, Billy and Frank came up Thursday and helped me get, knock out a lot of repairs that have been piling up. So, I just thank all of you who step up and give your best and hardest. If you hadn't seen the new lights outside, Brother Terry put up, gotta have a look. Where are they? Hmm? Where are they? They right out them doors and up. Oh, oh they replaced the old ones? Yeah. The one the birds like? Rob the birds of their nests. Mm -hmm. Which was kind of sad because the bird nest had been there longer than I've been here. This is all the light has been there, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, is there any prayer requests, spoken prayer requests <coughs> this time? Yes. Uh, please keep my brother in prayer. Uh, he had his brain surgery the other day. Everything went well, and uh, he, uh, it was supposed to be an eight, nine hour surgery, and I think it lasted two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And so, uh, was that for got, a good reason? Yeah, they got 98% of it, uh, and they said that the uh, little 2% that's left uh, was around some blood vessels. Uh, they'd be able to get that right with radiation if they needed to. Uh, they're going to keep an eye on him and everything. Uh, he's still going to be in the hospital for about a week. And then, what? Well, they already told him he could go home. Well, I went home yesterday. That's what I know. But, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, keep him in prayer for uh, healing and uh, everything. And I uh, uh, just uh, appreciate it. Amen. Did they ever say if it was malignant or No, uh, they, uh, they sent the biopsy off to get it uh, tested and hadn't heard anything back yet. So. All Again, right. pray that it's not malignant, you know, that it won't come back. Uh, mm -hmm. I know prior, you guys, probably some of y'all probably had him on Facebook. Uh, out of all of us siblings, he was the clown of the four. <laughs> uh, he is one of those joyous uh, people who loves God and uh, gives God all the praise and glory. Uh, but he said over the years... Uh, people had been calling him a knothead for years, and he finally realized it was true. He had a knot on his head. And then after that, he said after he got uh, the shots in his uh, in his uh, skull, he finally realized that numb skull was also uh, was appropriate, you know. And so <laughs> he said, "You're bad." Yeah, no, no, I said, that's what his words, not mine. You know, but. Uh, he said, you know, not head and nut skull were the two things he was called when he was growing up. And that building, they suited him just fine because he was both. <laughs> so he is uh, still in good spirits. Uh, he told me on the phone, he called me after the surgery and everything uh, he came to and told me to call and let Paul and Cammy know that he uh, made it through fine and gives God all the glory and uh, to pray for him. He said, I'd stay on the phone a little bit longer, but I have a splitting headache. So, where does he live? Uh, he lives over in uh, Warren, Texas, Woodville area. So, you guys, he is the uh, the police chief over the Warren ISD. So he's over all the kids there and, and everything. So the whole town. Yeah, he was a state trooper, right? No, no, no that's my brother. That's, that's my brother. He was. I was gonna say he was real funny when he stopped me. Yeah, no, he was. He was a deputy sheriff uh, for 18 years and then became. 
police chief over at Warren High State. But, uh, and then the other brother is the state trooper. Okay. Uh, so. And because at first I thought you stopped me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, we left about that that day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. Uh, Bob and Betty. Yes. And Julia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to keep them in prayer. Uh, uh, Cindy said her friend Kendall Simmons is having her wisdom teeth cut out tomorrow. Okay. Keep her in prayer. I've done that. Been there. Let's pray the storm this morning. I was not sure I had to call it for severe. Severe weather? Yeah, they got the weather to look out tomorrow. Well, let's pray that we get the rain we need without us danger and Weather pray, that we don't need. Pray my office stays standing if we do get high wind because it's cracking and creaking every day. A little bit more. Mm. Yeah, it should have been condemned years ago. It was. We pray for um, <laughs> for Dylan, um, Dylan and Elena, or Elena and Beth's family that Beth and Chris get in church, but Elena worked with Dylan to get him into a church or this church or a friendly or and you know, somewhere you can get that help he needs. Right. Yeah. I need to learn about God to And I also forgot that uh, Gideon went to a birthday party yesterday and when he come back home he was breaking out so they got to figure out what's that. Uh, remember Ukraine? The astronauts in space. What's the deal? I hadn't heard about that. Russell wouldn't allow him to get back on the ship and come back. Yeah, the rocket ship was attacked by Russia. Mm -hmm. Two things in Russia. They said no because he's American. Or he or she. Pray for our president that he might grow a backbone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say just go be coherent. Yeah. Well, not going too far into that, but yes. Our nation. Our lawmakers and what's going on there. Pray for the families affected because I know a lot of people hurting right now. Mm -hmm. yep. Who can't afford an electric car. Gas on the other. It's mm -hmm. 419 at this gas station. All right, any other? All of them spoke it simply. Raise your hand, Brother Terry Pittman, pray for us, please. Dear our Father, Lord, thank you again for this church and this Lord, lift all these prayer requests that to you. All the medical needs, Lord, please have your healing hand with them, Lord, and Lord, have you protected him and the ones over there in Ukraine. And Lord, please have your hand on this country that brings this country back to you, Lord, because we know you can do it. And Lord, please. Be with us tomorrow night when the storms come and let them not be severe, Lord. And Lord, please bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Look at the back box. I got plenty of time to preach. You oh, didn't send the five. Oh. Now that wasn't the reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> hey, man. Just pretty comfy. Everything that I've done this last week is catching up with me, so please forgive me as I sit down. As I do that, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at an issue that I've been asked about quite a lot here lately. And this is Jesus speaking on the end times. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Can all of you see me? Amen. 
says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time to come into your house, Lord, that we might worship you. Lord, that we might open your word. Lord, I just pray that as we do, we would be doers and not just hearers. Lord, I just pray now that you use this vessel for your glory, that I might step aside and you speak. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the disciples here, as they're coming out of the temple, they draw Jesus' attempt, uh, attention to it. And it was a beautiful sight made out of uh, white marble. When the sun would rise, it was just like a golden brilliant shining up on the hill. In all other places, it was beautiful. And then Jesus shocks them. He says, you know, this temple you're so proud of, not one stone's going to be left standing on another. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? It's a question we all want an answer to, isn't it? When is all that is predicted in the Bible going to come to pass? Especially the last days. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So he shocks them first when he says that the stones of the temple are all going to be knocked down. Now this partially happened when uh, Titus, General Titus, attacked in 70 AD and took Jerusalem by force and destroyed a good majority of the temple. And then I believe it was Julius, one of the Caesars, who came and finished everything. Taking everything apart. Of course, he had the idea possibly of putting it all back. But Jesus prophesied that no stone would be left on another that happened in A.D. 7. So what in the world is going on? And then he gives the admonishment that be careful. Many false prophets will come in my name. And we have to be very careful because we know throughout history many have. Paul himself admonished that if we or an angel from heaven come and preach any other gospel, let them be a curse. Amen. Now, we looked at Islam last Wednesday. And Muhammad believed that the angel Gabriel was speaking to him from a cave. He first thought it was evil jinn or evil angels. And then he believed that it was the angel Gabriel. And there came Islam. We know that Joseph Smith supposedly 
saw an angel. I believe the angel Moroni. And Mormonism came about. The Watchtower, Jehovah Witness, they were spoken to by supposedly an angel. So we have to be very careful what we believe and who we trust. Because if it's any other gospel than what is in this book, Paul says, let them be accursed and do not follow them. And there are a slew of false prophets on TV today. Amen. That's right. You just have to turn it on. And it's sad because there are some good preachers, but they're surrounded by all these others. And it's easy for people to be led astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Each generation we think we are the last. And you know, as I watch the news and look, it seems like this very well could be the build-up to the end. But like I say, every generation, it seems, has thought pretty much the same thing. And it says, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And as Jesus describes this, the beginning of sorrow, and we'll see this even more thoroughly in Second Th or First Thessalonians, it says that it is like birth pains. So as we see more and more of the wars, of the famines, of the earthquakes. Uh, bizarre weather all over the place and man has the audacity to think that he is capable of being responsible for this earth. But it's God who holds it in the palm of his hands. Then they will deliver you up in tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Uh-oh. That's not something we like to hear, is it? Why in the world would they want to persecute Christians? We don't bomb anybody. Our creed is not to kill the infidel. What is it that makes mankind from all nations hate Christianity? The answer is we speak to their sins. And people don't like to have their sins pointed out. Matter of fact, they say that pointing out sin is hate speech. It's kind of like if a child wants to go play in the street and you keep them back, if people would say, well, you're being hateful. No, I want to keep the child from getting hit. I want to save it from suffering. It's the same way with other people when it comes to Christ. We aren't the ones who say what sin is. When it comes to the homosexual agenda, agenda 
I do not have to form an opinion. God has already told me what my opinion will be. Love the sinner, hate the sin. But we have to call sin what it is. After all, what is it that separates mankind from the grace of God? It's our sins. We're sinners. God said at the very beginning, if we eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for this you shall die. And that wasn't just physical death. That was physical, but even more serious. I believe that's right. Is the fact that it's spiritual death. Separation from God. But yet God loves us. So what did God do to satisfy His sense of justice but also satisfy His love and mercy for His creation? He sent Jesus Christ into the world, the Son of God, who came to pay the penalty for sin. He was the only one that could. He came. He suffered. He died on the cross. Took on all our sins. Paid our sin debt. And offers His hand to whosoever will. Whosoever will come shall be saved. He loved us enough all the other little g gods that are supposed to exist require the person to perform great deeds and services to earn that God's faith. Christianity, God did the work. Amen. God provides the salvation. Yeah. He demands a penalty for sin. He's God. He's holy. He's the judge of all. And His righteousness demands a guilty of a verdict of guilty. I'll get it out here in a minute. But His love demanded that He pay the debt that we owe. So that if we will respond to Him and come when He calls, we shall be saved. All, uh, all, not always, but often I test the church and say, might in that verse. And praise God every time y'all are quick to say, no, no, no. Not might, but shall be. <coughs> so, be careful. And many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now when tribulation comes, there's going to be a great uh, falling out of the church. Many who are professing to be Christian but not possessing Christ when the tribulation and the persecutions hit, 
there's going to be a great falling away. Now this is not people losing their salvation. This is people who have never had salvation. Because those who are saved will endure to the end. But praise God, Jesus Christ is going to come get the church before the really bad stuff happens. Now, I preach and teach a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. What we're reading in 24 is not the rapture of the church. It's the second coming of Christ. In second Th or First Thessalonians, I don't know why I'm going to say second so bad, but First Thessalonians 4, we're told, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and wore again, even so God will bring with him those sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means perceive those who sleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with Him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another. And here again, but concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. The difference between the rapture and the second coming is in the rapture of the church when Jesus comes back to get his saints. And remember in John 14 he tells them that he's gone to prepare a place for them and if He's gone to prepare a place. He'll surely come back as we all go to meet Him in the air. On the second coming of Christ at the end of the tribulation, He comes. And we see it in Revelations chapter 19. Verse 11 says, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with him it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness, <clears throat> fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. You see, when Jesus Christ comes back a second time, He breaks heaven open. And we're going to look here in a minute at thunderings and lightnings as lightning flashes from the east to the west. 
but it is unmistakable. He ascends from heaven to earth. The church, those who believe in Jesus Christ who have been raptured and the angels are coming with Him. But you know, I always wondered why we were wearing white robes. You know, white's not a very good color to do battle in. The fact is, we're not going to be battling. Amen. We're going to be witnesses to the victory of Jesus Christ because He's going to speak and it's going to be over. All the armies of the world are gathered to battle Israel and Jesus Christ. He appears from heaven And as I see, he speaks and it's over. His word is law. What he commands happens. And we go on and uh, see also that in that time the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as witnesses to the, all the nations. Then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Jerusalem flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop go down to take will not go down to take anything and let him who is in the field not go back, but woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, not ever shall be. And lo, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But all, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. It's going to be tough. Now, who is the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel? That is the Antichrist who at the halfway period of the tribulation is going to break covenant with Israel and set himself up to be worshipped in the temple. It goes on then, if anyone says to you, look here is the Christ or there, don't believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So, if anybody preaches any other gospel than Jesus Christ, and salvation through Him. Let them be accursed. Amen. And it goes on. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagle will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He 
He will send his angels with great sound and trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So, you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. <clears throat> so, when Jesus Christ comes back the second time, there will be absolutely no mistaking who it is. Everybody will see as if it's lightning and lighting up the sky from the east to the west. Everybody will know. Well, why does it say that mankind will mourn? Because all of mankind at that time will know that they are lost. They have rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they are mourning because they know they're lost. And they're going to hide everywhere, thinking that maybe they can hide from you. But that's not going to be the case. And then those who've been saved during the tribulation period are going to be taken to safety. But all the lost, all the lost are going to suffer damnation in hell. And Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. Amen. Yeah then all those lost are going to be pulled up and judged. It says the earth and the sun are going to flee from the sovereign judge. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, there is only one exit from the great white throne judgment. And that is hell. But while we are living, there is a way to escape that judgment. And that is by placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Asking Him to come into our hearts and our soul and to save us from our sin. That is who the elect are. Those who call on Jesus Christ for salvation. After salvation, the Christian's work is sanctification. And then when Christ comes for His church, it's going to be time for glorification. And we will be in heaven with Jesus Christ to rule and to reign for all eternity. And it's going to be good. Get that picture of saints playing hearts on clouds all day. You know, that doesn't sound very exciting to me, but it you? We're going to be with God. Amen. I believe we're going to serve Him in many different ways. And every task He gives is going to be 
divinely suited to how He's made us. But that's a sermon for another day. Brother Jim, if you would go. I don't know what God's laid on your heart during this message, but I pray that you would be faithful. That we'd all be faithful to what God lays on our heart. And uh, that we would just hear God's Word, but we would do it. Be faithful. Be faithful to God. He'll ask you to step out of your comfort zone. Amen. But He'll supply the strength and the energy to get it done. Amen. Everybody rise, turn in your hymnal to a hymnal 124. 124, just as I am. <coughs> On three. One. Two, three. Just as I am without one plea from that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. so that we might be a shining light for you, Lord, in this uh, these troublesome times that we have coming for us, Lord, in times of tribulation and trials. Lord, we ask that you would just uh, put a hedge of protection around all those that we have out there that are traveling, Lord. Give them traveling grace to get to where they need to be and bring them back uh, to us here, Lord, so that we might praise you and glorify you. Lord, we ask that you would just be with all those that are on our prayer list, Lord, all those that are out there hurting, Lord. We know that you are a mighty God. And that you can uh, save them and help them, Lord, and uh, heal them. And Lord, we ask that you just be with them. We ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.